Good morning, church! In case you can't tell, here I am at Gloria Day right now because I want to make sure that you know that next Sunday, July 12th, we'll be having worship outside here in the churchyard. And so next week, there will be an email that will tell you more about what that's going to look like. But there are a few things that I really wanted to highlight for you. First, we know that it could rain or it could be really, really hot. And if that's the case, we're going to cancel and postpone it to the following Sunday. And if that would happen, we'll uh, live stream a service um, in the sanctuary that we'll post online. Also, even though we're having outdoor worship, you might be someone that you still may not feel safe coming to worship, and that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that we record our worship service and we'll post it online so that way you can still engage in the service. So if you are coming, a few really important details for you. One is this thing, a mask. Make sure that you bring a mask and if you don't have one, we'll have some for you because all of us the whole time will be wearing a mask in the proper way. Now this, we all know, is not the proper way to wear a mask, but it covers your nose and your mouth. Um, also, if you have a lawn chair, bring it with you. We'll have a few extra chairs just in case you don't have one, um, but it would be great if you have one to bring it along with you. And then we'll distance ourselves throughout the yard. I know we haven't been together in a while. It's gonna be hard, I know for me too, to not wanna run up and say hi to people. But staying far apart and wearing our masks is going to be really, really important to make sure that we can all stay safe and that we can make sure everybody feels safe coming to worship too. And so I think those are the most important details about next Sunday's worship. But look, I will create a video by next Saturday because we'll make the decision by Saturday morning if we are going to have worship based on the weather. And then I'll create a video of what exactly it's going to look like for you to come to worship that Sunday. So keep your eye out for that. Um, but I hope if you are able that you plan to join us for worship in person next Sunday, July 12th, out here in the churchyard. And so now let's take a time to center ourselves as we prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Do nobis pacem pacem. Do nobis pacem. 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 One of my favorite parts of our worship service is the time that we have for confession and forgiveness. I don't know about you, but I screw up a lot throughout the week. I make mistakes, I treat people in ways that I wish I didn't, I think things I wish I didn't, I mess up over and over again. And so that's why each week I need to come to church and I need to tell God those ways that I'm aware of that I've messed up. And then also know that God knows those things that, I'm, that I've messed up that I'm not even aware of. And the beautiful part is that we have a God that isn't there, you know, requiring our confession. It, we don't confess because God has to hear our sins. We confess because we need to hear God's forgiveness over and over and over again. We need to be reminded that when we mess up, we have a God who will always come to us and say, you are forgiven. And then we go out and we try again. We try to mess up just a little bit less 
than we did the week before. And so at this time, I'd like to leave some space for you to lift up to God those ways that you've messed up this week, those things that you are aware of, and those things that you aren't aware of. Let us lift them to the Lord. We know that we have a God who knows us inside and out. And that God who knows us inside and out loves us deeply and claims us as God's own. And so this week here, that you are forgiven, that you are forgiven over and over and over again for those ways that you fall short and for those ways that you mess up that you have a God who is surrounding you with love, that you have a God who comes down and sits with you right in the midst of your struggles. And so we give thanks that we have a God who loves us so very deeply. And then we go out and we try to be a little bit better next week. And we pray for God's help with that. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. When people encountered John the Baptist, they thought he was weird. They thought that he ate weird things, that he liked being alone too much out there in the woods, that his preaching was too judgmental and called them out too often. And then Jesus came along and you know the religious righteous, they didn't really like Jesus either. They thought Jesus, well, he ate too much and he always sat at the tables and ate with the people who he wasn't supposed to be eating with. He ate with sinners and tax collectors, those on the outside and foreigners. He wasn't sitting often at the tables of the religious righteous, the ones who had been following the rules, the ones who had been anxiously awaiting Jesus to arrive. Jesus was not what they expected, and John the Baptist was not what they expected. I imagine that they wanted someone like them, or at least someone who would reinforce the rules that they had been living. Someone who would come and tell them that they were doing a good job and all those other people out there, all those other sinners, well, they weren't doing so great and so they wouldn't receive any kind of reward for not being so great. And so I wonder, because I think we too, are just like them. I think we too want someone like us, 
We too want Jesus to say, great job for you. And you see those other people over there? Well, they're not doing so great. I think sometimes we have that same expectation that they had on Jesus way back when. And so I'm wondering, what do you expect when you come to Jesus? When you come to Jesus, do you expect comfort? When you come to Jesus, are you, do you expect to be told that you are right? When you come to Jesus, are you looking for your views to be validated? When you come to Jesus, are you looking to be challenged? When you come to Jesus, are you just simply looking to be heard? What do you expect when you come to Jesus? In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus gives us an image. Jesus gives us this image of Jesus coming right alongside us. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Essentially, Jesus says that he will come right alongside us. Now, no, Jesus doesn't say that he's never going to challenge us. Jesus doesn't say that he is only going to lift up those views that we believe in. And Jesus doesn't say that he's going to have a magic wand and make sure that we never struggle or suffer in our lives. Instead, Jesus promises something that I think is more powerful. Jesus promises to come alongside us right in the midst of our struggles, right in the midst of those things that we are wrestling with, right in the midst of our uncertainty, and right in the midst of our fear. And Jesus promises to sit with us there in the midst of that. You know, this week, uh, there has been this huge tree that has been looming over our yard that's on the back of, it's actually not on our property, it's on our neighbor's property, but it's kind of on the back of our property. And just the way that the tree kind of uprooted from the roots and began to fall, it was coming right for our yard. And it has been this tree that has been looming over us for a few weeks now. And so every time that there's a storm, we're always rooting for the tree to fall. Because we just want it to fall so that way it's no longer there and we can clean it up. Now this isn't a small tree, it's a huge tree. And one night, or one morning this week, we woke up and the tree had fallen. Thankfully, we had strategically placed our chicken coop and all the things that we don't want ruined in our yard and it didn't hit any of them and so everything is fine. But when we walked out, you know, seeing the tree up, it didn't seem as big as it is now that it's down on the ground. It is going to be a huge job to clean up. It has given Brett a reason to buy a bigger chainsaw which is reasonable. And so it's going to take a lot of time to cut up all of that wood, to use the very small trailer that my father-in-law has and to haul it to the dump over and over and over again. It feels like an overwhelming job. But the beautiful part this week, and I would say one of the joys of this time of quarantine and COVID is that we've really gotten to know our neighbors in a whole new way. It kind of started out, you know, we knew one another okay because our children played together. But usually when our children were playing together, we were doing other things. But during this time, we really as adults started to get to know one another. And so what we've noticed this week when everybody noticed that this giant tree had finally fallen in our yard, everybody said, you know, I have some time on Saturday morning and a chainsaw if you want some help cleaning it up. You know what, I have a truck so I can load up my truck and you can load up the trailer and it won't take as many trips to take it to the dump. None of our neighbors waved a magic wand and made that tree disappear for us but they promised to come alongside us. They grabbed their chainsaws, they're willing to bring their trucks, 
so that way we can get our yard cleaned up. It's kind of a goofy example, but it is what Jesus does for us. In those trees that have fallen in our lives, literally or figuratively in our yard, Jesus doesn't just magically make it go away, but Jesus grabs a chainsaw, Jesus grabs his truck, and promises to come alongside us. And at Gloria Day, that's what I think we're doing too, with this Saturday um, where we are giving out food to people who are in need. No, people don't have to prove that they are worthy. It's just simply free food. Now, I went to church this week, and I went into the hall, and I saw how much food is there. And it is so much food that you have come together to collect. And it's beautiful to see all of that. And last week, we got to hear some of the stories that you've been hearing as you're handing out food in the line. Tracy told, Tracy Carlson, um, I should say, um, told the story of a woman who came through the line and she had lost her husband recently. And then she also lost her job. And then on top of it, her daughter is struggling and now she is helping to care for two of her grandkids. So yes, yeah, she has a new job, but she's adjusting to the new job. She's grieving the loss of her husband. And now she's caring for two grandchildren at the same time. And she isn't always sure how she's going to make ends meet. But that food that all of you collected and gave to her, well, that maybe makes the electricity bill a little bit better or a little bit more manageable that she can pay it. That's you coming alongside her in a very simple way of giving out food to make her burden maybe a little bit less heavy to bear. And so this week, whatever you are struggling with, maybe you are feeling depressed because during this time, you've been really isolated. Maybe you too are wondering how you are going to pay your electricity bill. Maybe you are wrestling with Jesus and how Jesus' message aligns with you and your life. Maybe you are grieving the loss of your father, the loss of a friend. Whatever it is that you are struggling with, whatever it is that you are wrestling with, I'll know this week that Jesus comes alongside you. Know that Jesus isn't always there to necessarily completely solve it, but Jesus is there to give you rest. And so rest in that knowledge. Rest in our Savior who loves you and who sits alongside you if you are laughing or if you are weeping. Amen. Jesus shine, fill the land with the Father's glory. Please be the place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. We pray for the nations. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, church, it was so good worshiping with you this morning. Laurel has composed a really beautiful benediction. Um, that is how we are going to end our service uh, today. Um, I just pray that you let these words of blessing wrap around you um, and that you have a blessed week. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.